It's one of the most critical jobs in the world, protecting the President of the United States. But that's just the tip of the iceberg for the Secret Service. From Miami to New York, Secret Service agents are armed and undercover, protecting your money, taking down counterfeit rings, and breaking up fraud schemes. Go behind the front lines of a non-stop battle against crime with the United States Secret Service. Once a year, a team of federal agents makes a delivery to an industrial park outside Miami, Florida. Their mission is strictly low profile. These agents are carrying dangerous goods in bulk. On the street, this cargo is worth more than a million dollars. Law enforcement agents have risked their lives to seize it and spent hundreds of hours analyzing it. But in the end, the stuff is trash. Just ink on paper. It adds up to $1.2 million in counterfeit US currency. Just a fraction of the millions in forged bills taken off the streets every year in Miami alone. Keeping the poison of counterfeit out of America's financial bloodstream is a never-ending struggle. And a duty that falls to the agents of the United States Secret Service. This is the Secret Service you may know. The security team, or protective detail. A job where failure is not an option. Our people have a very difficult job. They have to be right 100% of the time. We have no room for error. For Secret Service agents, the stakes couldn't be higher. Whether they're protecting the president or working the agency's other top mission, protecting the US economy. The Secret Service was created to fight a flood of counterfeit that swamped the US during the Civil War. Today, that struggle has gone global. Our financial system is really under attack every day. Counterfeiters always try to defeat our nation's financial system. And for a counterfeiter, sometimes there's no higher calling than to see if they can counterfeit a U.S. note. Miami, Florida. Gateway to the Caribbean and Latin America. These streets are a matrix of international commerce. Shipping, shopping, beaches, and business all make this city a prime target for a flood of forged currency. On average, the federal agents intercept some $80,000 coming through the city every week. There's a lot of money in this city, a lot of legitimate money in the city. There's a lot of illegitimate money that comes in and out of this city. And Miami in particular is a hotbed for counterfeiting. Cyber theft, credit scams, mortgage fraud, Fighting counterfeit is just one of the financial crimes assigned to Secret Service investigators. Okay. At any one time, we could have a number of operations going on, being some sort of skimming operation, identity theft, counterfeit investigation. In fact, as of today, we had all those operations going on at one time and, and do as we speak right now. On Assignment Miami, a Secret Service counterfeit investigation. This gang has been ripping off stores across Miami. They have no idea Secret Service surveillance and covert agents are tracking the case. A lot of stores across South Florida that were getting targeted by counterfeiters. A group of individuals have been buying electronics with counterfeit money, taking those electronics back to different stores to get genuine currency. Passing fake money for real goods. That's how small-time counterfeiters often make profits. 
it's not a sophisticated note. However, the notes are easily made because they're made by a common inkjet printer. And unfortunately, South Florida is getting saturated. Some counterfeiters rely on an ally working the register to make sure their bills pass. But this target employee really works for the U.S. Secret Service. Meet Miami's top undercover agent, or UC. His name, face, and voice must remain unidentifiable. But for the first time ever, this UC talks on camera about working as the inside man. Not everyone can do undercover. You have to be able to blend. Hey, man, how you doing, brother? You have to study your, your target, and you have to be able to communicate and talk to this person and get on their level. You know, I'm not going to come up to them as a Secret Service agent and be like, hey, sir, uh, how, how are you? You got some contraband. I need to talk to you about it. You have to stoop to their level. You know, you wear their clothes. You use their slang. Getting a man on the inside also takes time. In the case of the retail counterfeit ring, the breakthrough came when they identified a link to the suspect. We noticed from the surveillance footage that the, the defendant spoke to a young lady who worked at the Target store. So I approached that young lady and I brought her back into the office and I told her, hey, you need to work with us. We need to get these guys off the street. And once I know that you know somebody, that's all I need. So I did what they call a surprise meet. The undercover agent orchestrates what seems like a random meeting. His contact makes the introduction. I'm Scott Duke. All right. But it's up to the UC to lure the suspect into a deal. Now I take over the investigation, telling her, hey, oh, is this guy about money? He about money? Does he want to make money real quick? I'm trying, I'm trying to do some And I'm like, what is he about, you know? And he says to me, like, oh, where you work? I said, I work at Target. You're at Target. You register? I worked in electronics. He goes, oh, you're my best friend. <laughs> you can be my best friend, bro. I got something for you. The agent has conned the con. We're going to get rich. And won his trust. So now we're becoming friends. He's saying, like, hey, I tell you what I can do. I can go to your store, and I got, like, this fake money. And I'm like, fake money? Well, what do you mean, fake money? And that's when we set up the deal. You know, it's like, sink, hook, gotcha. The surprise meet is a success. The next time they cross paths, the deal will go down. In Miami, the Secret Service has turned a Target store into a trap. Be advised, Target heading southbound. Roger that. But there's no guarantee the suspect will take the bait, even with an undercover agent in on the scam. You do all this work for this one day, for this couple hours of an operation, and it might not go. So yeah, are, are we anxious? Yeah. Is, is it the stakes higher? Yes. And when a guy comes, no. Everybody's excited, but OK, we might have something here. Surveillance cameras have been patched into a clandestine network. Remote controls let agents track the action. You set up your perimeter, you set up your surveillance, and then you control everything, the ins and outs, the exits. You know, if that person goes this way, you have units set up to go northbound, you have units set up to go southbound. So you have everything in place. So you want to bring that guy into the web. You know, once you bring that guy into the web, it's kind of hard to get out of. Inside, the counterfeiters meet up with their connection and begin to loot the store. They start picking out TVs and electronics and video consoles, anything that costs a lot of money. Like these Xboxes, and they're like $400, $500, and then the televisions would cost like about $1,200 to $1,500. They grab a cart full of top-of-the-line electronics, items with the highest resale value, and head for the registers. 
To make a profit, the gang plans to return the merchandise to other stores and pocket the cash refund. The gang pulls out a roll of bogus bills. The undercover team has been waiting for just this moment. When they come up with the merchandise, I will take the counterfeit, give it to my guy, he puts it in a separate compartment of the drawer, and then we give him a receipt. The counterfeit keeps coming. Over $5,000 in fake money. But the scheme is worthless without receipts. The hustler's proof of purchase. You want a separate receipts because you can't put it all on one. If you put it all on one, it's going to flag. And they need to split the, the merchandise up between their, their group. So a cer certain group can take the merchandise to one store, and another group can take it to another store. They can't all take all this stuff to one store. The UC plays his part to the final moment. His skills are critical for a safe, clean takedown. He sidetracks the counterfeiters knowing that if they suspect a setup, the arrest could get dangerous. He tried to distract them one last time so they won't see the, the arrest teams coming in. You know, like, hey, help me put this in the truck. So they open up the trunk. He had this SUV with these speakers in the back, and we had no room to put the, the TVs. So I'm looking at it, and I'm like, well, where are you going to put all these TVs? And you didn't think of that? You know, but they never, they never think. All they think about is the money, OK? I want to make quick money, and I want to make it fast, and that's how they do it. So he comes, he looks at me, he said, well, can I take it back down? I said, Wait, you mean at the same store? You're going to buy $5,000 worth of goods and you want to take it all back at the same store? I'm like, no, you can't do that. So then I gave you the arrest signal. The arrest team rounds up the gang, the goods, even their car enough evidence to convict them. When my team comes after you and we put you in jail, you belong there. You know, because there is no, well, I don't know if he did it or not. No, you did it. We caught you on tape, and you need to go to jail. As long as the government has been printing money, enterprising criminals have been forging, doctoring, and stealing it. But the Secret Service is ready for whatever comes their way. In the financial heart of the country, the New York field office just got a new lead. Basically, we just received a package that was intercepted. It had counterfeit currency embedded within this baby photo album. Standard package screening for this baby book raised a red flag with the carrier. So the item was turned over to the Secret Service. Uh, they, they opened and searched the package, and as they were going through the contents, that's when they found the counterfeit currency that was actually hidden inside materials that were being shipped into the country. In the counterfeit money trade, New York is one of the hottest locations in the country. Often counterfeit money is printed abroad then smuggled into the U.S. Thanks to the city's size and status as one of America's busiest international ports of entry, roughly 10% of the country's phony cash comes in here. In this squad, we process about $150,000 of counterfeit money per week. This started out as a, a $5 U.S. currency note. And what they did was they, they bleached it. They take a $5 bill, make it a $100 bill, and then go out and try and uh, purchase uh, something with it. If it's a well-made, high-quality note, a counterfeit bill could change hands dozens, even hundreds of times. When you have a lot of activity and it's moving quickly, as things do here in New York City, uh, there's an opportunity uh, for people to mistakenly take a, a counterfeit bill. But fake money is like a hot potato. Whoever's caught with it last has to eat it. 
Now, the Secret Service will use the baby book to root out a whole counterfeiting network. 